by saying that the end of this journey called Jesus, the end of this journey called faith, the end of this journey called obedience is glory. I'll repeat myself again. The end of this journey that we call Jesus, this pursuit, passionate pursuit to know him, to be like him, to obey him, to live and walk by faith. The end of that journey is the glory of God manifest in the life of the believer. Hallelujah. If you do not know to what end this journey and this pursuit is all about, you will be very wary on the way. The knowledge of the end is what gives you the power to stay and the power to continue. Are we together now? So believers go to church every time they pray, they fast, they study scripture, they walk in obedience as far as whatever instructions they are given is concerned. They give, they worship, they do everything they are told to do. But it's important for you to know that the end of it is not just to satisfy a religious process or a religious program. That God is on a journey with every believer and that includes you. And that he has pre-informed us ahead that no matter how long that journey seems, the end of it, I repeat, is glory. And I have taught you that the glory of God is a holistic capture of everything that makes God God. His wisdom, his power, his grace. So any believer who begins a journey with God, you may not see what you are becoming through the prayers. You may not see what you are becoming through the regular fellowship. You may not see what you are becoming through the sacrificial giving. You may not see what you are becoming through the confession of the word, through prayer, through fasting, through the inconvenience that you subject yourself to. But we are comforted in Romans 8.18. It says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. There is a measure of God's glory as an assignment that every believer should capture and reveal within his lifetime. I like this. So as ordinary as we are, when we begin this journey in the spirit with the Holy Ghost, you are motivated by the fact that one day, as I walk in keeping with the truth, I will turn back and my life will become nothing short of the manifestation of the glory of God. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when you have to pray, you pray with this understanding. First, that you love Jesus. But then that you are on a journey that has an end. The end there does not mean full stop. The end means a realm, a season where you begin to see the fruit of all your spiritual sacrifices. The Bible says every activity that we do is likened to sowing. And that there are two kinds of soils. The spirit as a soil and the flesh as a soil. Are we Bible students? That you can sow to the flesh and you will still reap because the soil, the, the flesh is fertile also. But that you will reap corruption, limitation in all its ramifications. And then you can sow to the spirit and then he says you reap life everlasting. So every time you are praying, you are sowing. Fasting, you are sowing. Giving, you are sowing. Are we together? Being diligent as far as being in the house of God is concerned, you are sowing. Following online, you are sowing. Listening to the teachings again, you are sowing. Praying while others are sleeping, you are sowing. Everybody's a farmer. You are not given the liberty to choose whether or not you are a farmer. You are a farmer at every point of your life and your faith adventure. But the Bible says it is within your power to choose what kind of soil you sow. Many sadly have sown and are sowing to the flesh. And they are programming seasons of limitations of all sorts. But the Bible says that he that soweth to the spirit... So the moments that you spend week in, week out, 
you may not see anything changing physically but my bible your bible says that you are sowing ladies and gentlemen find comfort tonight you are sowing every farmer endures there are plants that will take years before they yield am i right on that there are plants that within maybe a few weeks a month to 90 days max they've already produced but there are certain giant trees that you will keep watering you will keep pruning sometimes to your frustration but yours is to be patient because when it begins to yield after 60 years a hundred years it is still standing this looks like the kind of destiny someone is building in this place you are watering every week watering every week watering every week in fastings in prayer in study of the word in giving in sacrifice let me tell you ladies and gentlemen the spirit of god is doing something for someone it may even be your church you do not even know all the while while you are seated here that one day you will be such a great man of god but god keeps telling you keep coming keep building this is beyond loyalty to a ministry this is beyond membership this is destiny let me repeat myself now you will understand better that the end of this journey called jesus the end of this journey called faith the end of this journey called obedience is glory say glory one more time say glory as loud as you can say glory this is what god is breathing through your life the glory of god is a capture of everything that is contained in god and can be revealed through the saints his wealth is his glory his wisdom is his glory his goodness is his glory his power is his glory are we together now yes so show me a believer who has chosen with understanding to be a sower and to sow to the spirit no matter what is around that believer right now listen to me the end of it you will be making a big mistake if you laugh and mock at that believer because when you see the kind of bumper harvest that comes and how many of you know that the soil of the spirit will always produce in an accelerated dimension so one day the ordinary gentleman coming week in week out sitting praying fasting building receiving instructions in righteousness one service you will come like any other service not knowing that the fullness of time has come for you not for everybody the bible says now when the day of pentecost was fully come there are seasons that fully come and it differs from person to person you may come sitting quietly i came for koinonia and that day the mantle the grace the anointing for your destiny it arrived church before you and was waiting hovering round from place to place suddenly it finds you and from that meeting all that is seen through your life is a measure of glory that you yourself cannot explain you come to church an ordinary person and leave a prophet fully formed by the spirit you come to church as an ordinary person but live with a mysterious healing anointing that begins to announce you to the nations you come as an ordinary person finally that grace for kingdom wealth and abundance lands upon your life listen that is why it is dangerous when men miss their days of visitation because it is not given to you to know the exact day we are mandated to be faithful hallelujah yeah faithfulness is that quality that helps you to continue even when you have not seen the result knowing that god is not a man that you should lie not the son of man that he should it reminds me many years ago i think one of our crusades that we had small crusade and on the first day if i recall there was a particular lady or so woman who wanted to be healed and sadly she was not healed that first day and my people then they tried prayed over the person and nothing exactly happened and i think it was by the second day or the final day of the crusade that woman got healed now if she had turned after the first day and said well that's all right she would have missed that opportunity are we together i'm saying this so that your heart will be convinced 
that I am not wasting my time when I'm in the presence of God. This is something believers must be mentored into understanding because when people come to church most times, they either come to see the man of God or they come sometimes just for the ceremony or they come because they are workers or they come because they are loyal to the ministry. None of these reasons are wrong in themselves except that that is too small a reason for the kind of commitment you are investing in your destiny. It must be number one that you love the Lord Jesus but number two you know I am a sower you are tired from the office and you still have to come to church for hours I am a sower I am a sower I'm sowing to the spirit I'm sowing so that my children will reap what I had no opportunity of reaping I am a sower oh you come in and the auditorium is already full it doesn't matter the overflow or outside I will still sit and be diligent I am a sower I reject offense I am a sower I am here to serve the Lord I am a sower condition favorable or otherwise i am a sower when this becomes your mentality you will maximize when you come to church versus someone who comes to church and is careless spiritually and physically that kind of person will only share the grace and go back either ways you are still a sower except that you may not know what you are sowing until you see an ugly harvest rising and god tells you god cannot be mocked whatsoever a man sows. Are we together? Yeah. Whatsoever a man soweth. The assignment of the man of God is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit and hand you superior quality seeds because the sower soweth the seed and the Bible says that seed is the word of God. So as I bring you the word of God in season, among the many things I'm doing is that I'm handing you the seed that you will sow. You will do the sowing. Are we together? Yeah. And there are people who sow seeds and throw it on any kind of soil and it does not produce. And others are meticulous. They receive the seed with every sense of preciousness, knowing that this seed I have now can grow to become a giant oak tree that I will eat from and those who come after me can eat from. Please lay your hands on your head and cry for the spirit of discernment. Lord, I am here as a sower. Grant me the grace to receive precious seed and to sow it with wisdom that I will sow to the spirit so that I will of the spirit reap life everlasting. Someone is praying. The grace to participate in every aspect of the service remaining in prayer, in listening, in receiving by faith. I receive seed. I receive seed. Rebuke the spirit of distraction. Rebuke the spirit of slumber. Rebuke distractions of all sorts that when the word comes, I give it rapt attention, knowing that my destiny and indeed the destiny of those connected to me depends on the truth that I receive. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you. And you see.